Well, good morning, everyone. I see we got our Florida people back. <laughs> um, this Wednesday, May 18th at 4 o'clock, it's a congregational meeting with Jeff McDowell about the Global Methodist Church in the separation. Uh, he's going to tell you exactly what he knows, which isn't much because it changes every week. So he doesn't really know what's going on yet. He's just going to give you what he knows as well. Uh, so try to make it at 4 o'clock on Wednesday, uh, the 18th. Uh, he's got to be here anyhow because at 6 o'clock they're having a pastor's meeting. So that's just for pastors. And uh, But 4 o'clock he's going to be here to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, VBS is going to, uh, they started last Thursday doing a workshop uh, from 1 to 4. So you're more than welcome to come and work at the workshop uh, 1 to 4 on Thursdays. Um, um, I'm going to continue to talk about VBS. Um, we are absolutely thrilled with um, some work that Dan Andrus has done with decorating. Wait till you see the food truck he made. Oh, he blew me away. Very cool. Um, and we have some wonderful volunteers. Jenny Harrington's doing music. Carol Burns is in charge of snacks. Pam Jaquay will be up on the computer. Um, Jean will do some um, registration support. And Mylene will do her name tags, as always. We have group leaders, Lori Andrus and Matt McGregor and Jill Weaver and Dave Weaver has um, signed on. But that leaves a lot of holes. Forgive me for taking so much time, but please, please be in prayer. We need a craft leader, a recreation leader, a science leader, a puppeteer, a Bible storyteller, an assembly leader, 12 more group leaders, a light meal coordinator, registration help, snack help, craft help. It does take a village, as they say. And we have been directed by Christ to make disciples, and we need your help to do it. So please pray about it. Think about the people you know that you can get signed on. Um, we've received a lot of encouragement from Church Council and Christian Ed to um, offer this this summer. So please help us to do that. If you are interested in a t-shirt and you want the church to order it for you, there's information on the bulletin board. Um, yes, we are excited about the work that got done last Thursday, and there's more to do. So come for one hour, two hours, whatever you can do um, to help. But Katrina will be in charge again this Thursday. Thank you so much. At last week's church council meeting, it was decided to have a pancake supper. Uh, this will benefit the current expense account, and the finance committee will also decide on a, a charity to, will tithe 10% of our earnings to, to another charity. That's going to be June 9th uh, from 4 to 7, and it's an all-you-can-eat pancake supper. Dottie's granddaughter donated the real maple syrup, which is, it's a big, it's huge. <laughs> it's a big, the, the single biggest expense as well. Um, I'm going to have a sign-up sheet in the back. We are asking that if people could bring, like, for example, one pound of butter, and someone could bring one dozen eggs or so on, um, and it really helps offset some of the expense of putting on the dinner without being too painful to any anyone in particular. Um, I've got a sign-up sheet at the table for that. And we've got tickets made up. If anyone would like to take some tickets and maybe sell them at work or whatever, the cost is $8 per person. It's all you can eat. And uh, $5 for under 12. Thank you. Under 12, they can eat more than me. Um, the following week, on June 17th, the youth are putting on a spaghetti dinner. 
Um, they have tickets on sale. They have tickets right now with them. Um, so see a youth for tickets. It will be here um, from five to seven. I'm still looking for volunteers to help at the Wildflower Festival. I had a few, thank you very much. Um, and this gets the word out about what our church has to offer and also for VBS. So wanna give them the date for that? May 21st. May 21st. Um, and the youth, um, just a reminder that um, we are going to Kingdom Bound on July 26th and we need your deposit and your reservation by next Sunday. We would help, but we're going to a graduation. Mike. <laughs> Yes. I'm going to do my small group still, still on the 20th. Uh, it's going to be 8 o'clock at my home. And I'm going to try to get a hold of everybody in here for any women that might be interested in going. Instead of just picking the Bible study, I think we should decide as a group. And um, so I will try to talk to everybody as much as I can and, and see who might be interested in joining. I talked with uh, Mary Annette, and uh, she tells me that they tell her it's a matter of time for her husband, and she appreciate would appreciate the prayers of the church. Uh, Mary's husband passed away the other night. Just letting you know, Bob passed away the other night. So, yeah. How about joys and concerns? Uh, we still need to pray for the Ukraine. Uh, but even more um, imminent right now is we pray for the family of all the victims in Buffalo in the grocery store that were shot. There were 10 people that passed. And uh, I can only imagine what their families are going through. So we really need to say prayers for them. I need prayers for my mother, Linda. Um, she found her boyfriend deceased. And she really needs some prayer. Next weekend, Jim is leaving for work up in Connecticut for four months, and he's towing a huge trailer, <laughs> our camper. So I wanted to have prayers for his safe travel up there. I have a joy. My granddaughter, Erin Mulheisen, graduated, well, she didn't go to graduation yesterday at Oswego, but she has a degree in chemistry. And on Friday morning at 5.30, her brother helped her move um, the drive down to Trenton, Georgia. And they did it all in one day, good brother-sister time. But uh, she's starting a new job tomorrow in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I am praising God that we have a wonderful hospital facility, um, but I also ask for your prayers um, because I saw it up close and personal for three days, and we still don't know why my blood levels are low. So please be in prayer for me. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, please pray for the system up here. That see the TVs are glitching out on us. We're trying, to get the, we're trying to get it worked out. We just haven't had the right uh, answers yet. We are working on them. Please be patient. I have a good friend in Ohio. Her name is Jill, and I found out this morning that she has COVID. Well, praise the Lord, I made it through outpatient surgery. It took quite a while because my 
blood pressure was sky high and my blood sugar was sky high. But the Lord knew. He took care of it. And all I got to do is heal now. I'm coming. Um, I'd like to praise God that all my family and Buffalo is safe, even though they shop in that store. And I would like you like to ask y'all to join me in prayer for Buffalo, for this state, for this nation, and this world. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, there's so much that goes on in our world that we don't like. We pray for all the victims' families up in Buffalo. We pray for the ones that were wounded. We pray for them for healing. We pray for the young man who did the shooting as well, that he may come to know you and ask for forgiveness. We ask for Mary, pray for Mary, Linda, Jim, Cheryl, Jill, Darlene. We ask to be with them, Lord, each one. Watch over them. And we thank you for the joys. We thank you for the joys. We know that there are some out there that haven't been mentioned. The joys and the concerns, we ask you lift them up as well. Lord, we just thank you that we live in a country that we are free to pray for others. And we are free to worship. And we know there are some countries right now that aren't able to do that. We also lift up Ukraine and those people there. And also lift up the the Russians that really don't want to be there, be with them as well. We ask to be with our leaders of this country, that they will come to know you and have a relationship with you so they may lead better. Just as you lead us, Lord, you lead us in the right direction everywhere we go. And you lead us in our prayer as well. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Join us in the opening hymn, This Little Light of Mine.
I believe that we need to let it shine through this world. Because it is a messed up world. And we need to let Christ shine. Join him in the call to worship. Jesus Christ is our light and our vision and our sight. Our Lord is the way we are called to see life. We have come to worship, to receive that light for ourselves, that we might be filled with the light of Christ. Lord, when we last time we stood on Tito's, stretching to see over the horizon, stretching to see tomorrow, stretching to see the cutting edge of life. Many times we are complacent and view life from the easy chair. We are sometimes content to let life come to us, taking whatever comes. Lord, shock us out of the easy chair. Holy Spirit, get us up to the details. Put us on our front ears, your hogs, and seekers, help us to affirm our faith and witness us to us, Jesus Christ. As disciples, help us to follow faithfully. As servants, help us to serve. As children, let us to share eternity. God, we thank you for the tiptoe experience. Amen. Greet one another with love of Christ. But, so I'm going to give this children's story to all of you. Today we're going to start a new series, the book of James. It's five chapters. And every week, from now until five weeks, I'm going to be talking about James. Today, it's talking about testing of your faith. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but my faith has been tested several times. Faith is always, your testing of your faith is always there. 
But when your faith is tested, that brings you closer to God. It brings you one step closer when you are tested in your trials. December of 2018. God tested my faith. Do you remember that? Because he tests us every day. It brings you closer to God. Just remember that. When you go through trials... James talks about it in my sermon I'll talk about it to make it joy in your life because it brings you closer to God you can go to children's church now (laughs) who's leading children's church oh you got a whole crew now (laughs) you want to do it here okay Join us in the next hymn, which is, My Hope is Built.
I want you to raise your hands in the air. Not you guys, you guys can't. <laughs> raise your hands in the air. Praise God for all that he's done. In this church and everywhere else. Guide us, Lord. Give us direction to go in. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm reading from the New International Version. First scripture is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. This is the word of the Lord. And then second reading is James chapter 1, verses 2 through 12. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. But in the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised in those who love him. This is the word of the Lord. Pat? Testing our faith. Testing of our faith through trials and adversities. Suffering, etc. Produces in us a steadfast spirit that is invaluable. It's an invaluable characteristic of those who follow Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, please give us the strength to endure, to persist, and to thrive throughout the various trials and sufferings of this life. And thank you that at the end of it all, we'll receive the greatest promise of hope and eternity with you. Amen. The scripture that I read today will be coming from the English Standard Version. So today we begin amazing journey to the New Testament book of James. You know, I noticed where I said it's amazing journey. Because every book in the Bible is an amazing journey. We just have to get on that horse and ride on that journey. 
by picking it up and reading from that amazing book. As many of, uh, many of you have probably read before, the book of James is well known for its emphasis of teaching on both faith and works. Faith and works. We always talk about becoming disciples of Jesus. That takes both faith and works to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Which by no great coincidence is my title of our series, the book of James. The book of James is believed to be the earliest of all books written in the New Testament. Its author is James, the half-brother of Jesus, the pastor, leader, and elder of the Church of Jerusalem. Carol had texted me a while back when she was in Florida. Hope you don't mind if I use your name. And she said that she read certain books and she wanted to know where to go next. And I do believe I gave you the book of James. We that <laughs> because I knew I was going to do a series on the book of James. And I thought I'd give it to her. And she could read it ahead of time. Now you all know James is only five chapters. You can read the book of James starting today. So you kind of get an insight on what I'm going to talk about. So James was the half-brother of Jesus. He was a pastor, a leader, an elder of the Church of Jerusalem. Also significant in our series is intense persecution and adversity this early church faced. James is not writing as a disconnected observer, but rather an active participant in the lessons of faith that encourages that he encourages through his letter James the just as he was affectionately referred to as a good pastor with an important message of, for the early church. Importantly, his message continues to be relevant as, as the years go by. The persecution of the church carries on in the experience of the personal adversity felt in every living being. So each week we will look at two big ideas from the book of James. Today we're going to dive into chapter 1 and its teaching on testing our faith. Testing of our faith through trials, adversity, suffering, and etc., produces in us a steadfast spirit. So please open your Bibles with me, if you have them, to James chapter 1.
Our passage begins with intentionally, intentionally shocking statement. Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds. That's hard to hear, isn't it? Consider it joy when you go through trials of various kinds. When people go through trials, if they're a Christian, or even if they're not a Christian, sometimes they get closer to God because they need him. So it's hard to hear. It's hard to hear this and imagine there can be joy in the midst of trials. I can think of numerous things found, I find joy in, but none of them include pain or suffering or destructive, destruction or adversity. And yet James calls the early church to, to joy in the midst of persecution. Also worth noting here is that James doesn't say, now note this, James doesn't say if you experience trials, but rather when you do. Adversity was a foregone conclusion. 2 Timothy 3.12 says this, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Not might be persecuted, but will be persecuted. God never said that being a Christian was going to be easy. Never in the Bible have I seen it where he said that being a Christian is going to be easy. It's usually harder. And just because you and I aren't experiencing persecution like the early church did, or like some, are, some of our brothers and sisters around the world currently are. That we somehow lucked out and been spared the trouble. Not at all. In fact, James, what James goes on to articulate in our passage is that we count our trials as joy. Not because we love being in pain, but because we trust that in testing of our faith, it's producing in us something of immeasurable value. Something so valuable that every believer needs to experience it in one form or another. Testing of our faith. Testing of our faith. Has anybody here ever been tested in their faith?
James says we will meet trials of various kinds. This is an extremely important point to remember as as the original meaning of the various kinds was literally many colored. Let's pause here for a moment and try to remember when you first opened your big box of crayons. Try to remember the feeling that came over you when you looked at all those various colors that were available to you as a young artist. My kids ate them. But think about it. All those colors. On, on some level, this is the concept of being, being shared by James. There are a huge variety of trials of many colors. Many colors of adversity. And the pain that believers around the world will experience in their lifetime. It differs from person to person, church to church, culture to culture. We're talking things like relational pain, mental health and well-being, physical disease and suffering, financial loss, external persecution. The list could go on and on and on. In fact, there are people sitting here today who are experiencing deep testing of their faith. There are those in our midst asking questions like, is God even real? Is God, if God is so good, why does he allow evil? I could, allow, I could use this example. If God is so good, why did he allow this shooting in Buffalo? And 10 people lost their lives. <clears throat> if God is so good, why does he allow evil? <coughs> why won't he intervene in my life? Why won't he heal my child or my spouse or my friend? These are questions we all ask at some point in our faith. I asked that question when I was diagnosed. Why me? I'm a good guy. But the big question isn't, will I experience trials? But whether, rather, when will I experience trials? And the good news is that although there are various trials more numerous than the colors found in a box of crayons, There is also a God in heaven who is weaver, weaving every, waving every trial
every color into a magnificent, magnificent, wonderful, beautiful, and meaningful tapestry. The trick is learning to trust him through the process. And that's called perseverance. You know, I never liked that word. You got that P-E-R. The E is silent. Never liked that word. But that's what it is. Perseverance in the dictionary defines as persistent in doing something despite the difficulty or the delay of achieving success. And for those who follow Jesus, what do you think achieving success means? Or said a different way, what would it look like to live a successful life as a follower of Christ? I'm not talking about a successful life financially and, and you own a million dollar mansion. I'm talking about achieving and following Jesus Christ in your life. That's successful. Oh, it's great to have a million dollar mansion. But if you don't follow Jesus, are you successful? James gives us some insight into the answer when he says, you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Success in Christ means trusting Christ through the very trials, the various trials of your life as he brings us to the perfection of in completion, success for the believer is wholeness in Christ. And the wholeness is found on the other side of suffering. There is something unique about suffering and pain and adversity that, that produces divine character in us. Listen to the, what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 5. Not only that by, not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's, Love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit has been given to us. Adversity calls us to go higher, to be greater, and to trust deeper. Suffering expands our faith Pain drives us into the arms of the Father. And as we learn over and over and over again to trust our Heavenly Father through any and every situation or capacity to hope, our hope increases. It increases. 
Our capacity to be faithful increases. We learn to preserve because of the promise we have in Jesus. As we grow in faith and learn to follow Christ, we must also learn to keep our eyes on him. No matter how difficult or seemingly impossible the circumstances get. When I was in the hospital for a month, I got to share the gospel with the nurses. I got to share the gospel with the neighbor next door. So God had a plan for me to be there because he wanted me to share. Amanda told me the other day she went out to a dinner when she was down south and she actually prayed for one of the waitresses. She got to share the gospel. That's our job, is to share the gospel. Apostle Paul talks about this throughout his letter, but there is one place in Philippians that I find especially sad. Here's what it says. Listen carefully. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Where he says, Brothers, I do not consider it that I have made it my own. That's sad. When you haven't made the gospel of Jesus Christ your own, that's sad. Paul's motivation is, is Christ. Through various trials and suffering and persecution, Paul presses on. When times get rough, times get hard, we forget about God. You're angry at God because things aren't going your way. But on the other spectrum is also when you do have God and everything is going smoothly, you forget about God. But Paul's motivation is Christ. Through various trials and sufferings and persecution, Paul presses on. You get he's feeling his, he's learned to count it all joy. 
just like James said. Eighteenth century William Wilberforce says, Our model must continue to be perseverance. And ultimately, I trust the Almighty will crown our efforts with success. And success for the believer is to finish the race and to receive the promise of eternal salvation made available through Jesus Christ. With that in mind, let us also lay aside every weight of sin and cling to, which cling, so cling, sorry, so clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that has was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God Amen so throw off any weight or burden holding you back from pursuing Christ. Throw off the sin clinging to your life. Run the race set before you. And when you need help, think about these, specific, these three specific encouragements that come from our James passage. If you need wisdom through the trial, just ask. Don't let doubt creep into your process. And stay humble. Stay humble. Be careful not to think too little or too much of yourself. God's love, grace, and compassion, and mercy is there. Let the lowly brothers boast in his exhalation, in the rich, in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away, for the sun rises with the scorching heat and withering the grass its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuit. Be humble. Be humble. I said earlier it's worth repeating. Adversity calls us to go higher, to be greater, and to trust deeper. Suffering expands our faith. Pain drives us into the arms of the Father. And as we learn over and over to trust our Heavenly Father through any and every situation, there is hope. So count all your various trials of life as joy. For they are producing something immeasurable and valuable in you. Our passage from James ends by saying, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trials. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. I'll take that crown any day. So this coming week, I want you to think about the various trials you are facing or have faced. What you have learned from them. What you would have done differently. And how would you help someone else get through it? And if you're in the midst of a great suffering today, please know, please know we are with you. God is for you. 
And he's heard every single one of your prayers. Remember to ask for wisdom. To exercise faith and stay humble through the process. God bless you all. God bless you all this week. We'll continue our study through James next week. Read James. Learn from James. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask to be with each and every one of us today. Some of us may be going through trials, but we know that you are there and there is hope. And we thank you for that. We ask that you guide us. Give us the direction you want us to go in. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand if you're able or in spirit and join us in a closing hymn. I thought this would be an appropriate song to close in. Near to my God to thee.
Remember to share Jesus wherever you go. Go in peace, love of Christ in your hearts. Amen.